Order. It's time for questions for the Minister for Regional Development, and we will start with the, <coughs> excuse me, the listed questions. I call Ms. Kevin, <coughs> Mrs. Karen McEvitt. Ms. McEvitt. Mr. Principal, Deputy Speaker, question one. Uh, Mr. Principal, Deputy Speaker, uh, let me say at the outset that I have been very impressed uh, by the dedication and enthusiasm that David Strachan uh, brought to the post um, as Chief Executive of TransLink. Uh, I respect fully uh, his decision to leave uh, to take a new direction in his life. Um, I'm pleased that he will remain as Chief Executive until the end of September, uh, beyond his contractual uh, commitments to allow time for a new appointment to be made, uh, and I want to wish him uh, well for the future. The recruitment uh, process for the new TransLink Chief Executive is a matter for the TransLink Board. I expect uh, it to take this forward as a matter of urgency. Uh, I will expect also to be kept fully informed. Um, under the Transport Act 1967, I am expected to endorse any future uh, appointment by allowing a new CEO to become a member of the TransLink Board. I am confident that TransLink will continue to be led effectively during a period of significant budgetary pressure. Ms. McEvitt for supplementary. Thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. Can I ask the Minister, on this occasion, is it his intention um, to ensure that the successful candidate is legally committed uh, to staying with the company for a reasonable period of time? Well, I thank the member for um, uh, uh, her, her question. The um, member, I, I, I think, uh, should note that the decision uh, by uh, the current Chief Executive, uh, Mr. Strachan, um, was a very per and high, and a highly personal uh, decision, which I uh, completely respect. Um, uh, as I have indicated, the uh, appointment process uh, uh, is a matter to be handled by um, uh, the, uh, the board, uh, and, uh, and I have outlined uh, my involvement in it. Uh, but I do hope, looking forward, that, uh, that we can look forward to a degree of uh, stability. For TransLink, because there are challenging financial issues to be addressed, uh, and it will be important that, a, the, that the appointment um, a, is made um, at the earliest of, uh, uh, possible time, but also that, uh, that, that, that we can get um, some degree of uh, stability uh, as we move into the future. Mr. Sean Lynch. People ask on and thank you. Um, does the Minister envisage uh, additional remuneration in order to attract a qualified uh, and suitable person for the, for the post? I uh, thank the member for his uh, question. <clears throat> I think it is hard to, to speculate uh, on that, particularly for me, to, and probably unwise for me to speculate on that, uh, given that it is a matter for the TransLink Board. But I, I, I would expect it to be within the, uh, um, the, the agreed uh, uh, Perimeters of, of, of the most recent recruitment process, uh, and similar to therefore uh, similar to the current chief uh, executives. But of course, this is a matter that would have to be negotiated. Sir Jimmy Spratt. <coughs> and can I too uh, wish David Strachan well uh, in his new uh, calling? Uh, but can I ask the minister? Would the minister uh, ensure? that when a new chief executive is appointed, that he will continue with the drive of change within the hierarchy of the uh, TransLink organisation that David Strachan had uh, started, and that that change will not be obstructed in any way by the present board. I'm grateful to the member for his uh, supplementary question, and I'm sure that um, he will accept from me that uh, that he, he, he may have said he or she, uh, whoever the, the, the new uh, chief executive uh, uh, may be, uh, would drive forward um, uh, uh, in uh, the, uh, the, the necessary changes. Uh, and I do uh, want to place on record, I think David Strachan was uh, addressing um, a great many of those issues in a, in a highly professional way. Um, and uh, I, I would expect uh, and uh, I would want to see uh, the continuation of that, uh, so that, um, that the changes which are, I think, necessary uh, will be carried forward uh, to the benefit of not only TransLink, but to, uh, to, to, um, to the travelling public. 
to Tom Elliott. Uh, thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker, and uh, thank the Minister uh, for that update so far. But uh, just wondering if the TransLink being with our Chief Executive Officer uh, for a period of time will affect any of its current projects, for example, the Londonderry Rail Phase 2 and the Londonderry Transport Hub? I'm grateful to the, <coughs> to the member for his, uh, uh, his question. And of course, he, he, he raises uh, a couple of important projects uh, which um, uh, I believe are, are important in, in being carried forward, uh, regardless of the, uh, 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 of the current um, uh, uh, process of, of appointing a new chief executive. And uh, the I can tell uh, the member that the procurement process for the signalling works is well underway. Uh, it's then hoped that a contract can be awarded to allow the signalling work to start on site around the end of May 2015. Um, officials in my department are currently preparing an application for European funding to support the delivery of the Coleraine to Londonderry Rail upgrade pro uh, project. The application is due for submission to uh, the European Commission by the 26th of February. And the final date with regard to funding approval is expected approximately six months thereafter. A uh, member also asked for an update on the proposed new uh, train station and transport hub um, in Londonderry. Officials uh, in my department. Um, uh, uh, oh, sorry, I think it, it wasn't the London Dairy Hub, it was the Belfast Hub. Um, officials in my department, uh, together with officials from Scotland and the Republic of Ireland, en engaged extensively with the uh, Special European, Pro uh, European Programmes Body, SEUPB, to successfully secure the inclusion of a sustainable transport thematic uh, objective. Um, uh, in the Interreg 5A Territorial uh, Cooperation Programme for 2014-2020. The programme is in the latter stages of securing formal European Commission approval, and SEUPB has indicated it will be opening the first calls for applications this year following com completion of the approvals process. Officials in my department intend to submit an application for funding uh, also in relation to the Waterside Multimodal Hub project in this or subsequent calls. To John Dowd. Uh, question number two, Principal Deputy Speaker. Deputy Speaker, there are uh, currently proposals to dual two sections of the A6, Randallstown to Castle Dawson and Londonderry to Dungiven. The Randallstown to Castle Dawson scheme is currently being advanced to a shovel ready stage uh, to facilitate uh, commencement of construction. I don't know why they put words like that in there, but anyway. Um, at a short notice, um, should, should the necessary funding become available, um, I'm, able, I'm pleased to be able to confirm that the process to select a contractor commenced on the 7th of January 2015. The A6 London Dairy to Dungiven scheme, which includes a bypass of Dungiven, is well advanced uh, in terms of development. A public inquiry was held in 2012 and the inspector produced a report containing several recommendations. One of the recommendations was to examine a suggested alternative route for the Dungiven bypass that was put forward by a third party on the final day of the public inquiry, and we are there for uh, quality assuring the route. This work is nearing completion, and when I am satisfied that all issues have been appropriately reviewed, I will issue a departmental statement. For a supplementary. Uh, Mr. Principal, Deputy Speaker, with your permission, and I'm sure the entire House, may I offer my deepest sympathy to the child who lost to the family of the child who lost her young life on the East Six yesterday, and extend our good wishes to her older sister who is fighting for her life in a Belfast hospital. Uh, Mr. Principal, Deputy Speaker, the Minister inherited this legacy from the past, so we don't blame him for all of it. When can the Minister put a date on the day and the hour when Dungiven can have a bypass and the North West can link with the rest of the world in transport terms? Mr. Principal, Deputy Speaker, uh, grateful for the uh, supplementary. And let me add also uh, my sympathy to the family uh, of uh, the uh, uh, road fatality. Um, uh, on the A6 uh, and extend uh, sympathy to um, all of the friends and family of, uh, 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 involved. Um, the member uh, has, I think, um, uh, heard, I think, through my answer, uh, our, my determined efforts to continue 
uh, advancing uh, the S6 uh, scheme, and not just the, uh, uh, the one section of the, the uh, Castle Dawson section, but indeed also the, uh, the Dungiven Bypass uh, uh, element to it. Uh, of course, uh, we, have, um, we, we, we are seeking to bring it to a shovel ready. Um, uh, 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 stage. Uh, we'll continue to do that. We're optimistic that that can be done, and then it will be down to finance. And of course, uh, it is an important scheme. It is a long-awaited scheme. I know that there is considerable community support, as indeed there is widespread political support for it. And I look forward to uh, getting that uh, political support when it comes to uh, allocating uh, the necessary finance by the executive to allow me to proceed to do it. Mr. Gregory Campbell. Deputy Speaker, and can I uh, join in condolences to the family affected as well? Uh, hopefully, the Minister will be able to respond to the written question I've put down today regarding the Glenshean Pass, which, in covering it over 30 years, I never experienced delays like thousands of motorists faced this morning, uh, even though we've had much worse weather in the past. But in terms of the alternative route that the Minister is presently considering, will he be able to give us an indication within the next two months? as to whether or not that alternative route is a viable runner, or are we back to plan A? Well, to, the, to the member, and uh, I, I will await with interest um, his, his assembly question on, on problems this morning on, on the Glenshean Pass, and my sympathy uh, to, to, to anyone affected by any such problems. Can I also take the opportunity to say, and I do want to say this, that in terms of the winter services that my department provide, uh, from uh, the um, uh, early onset of winter uh, in October right through to, to the March-April time, uh, they, they, they are a very dedicated uh, bunch of staff who are attempting to alleviate at all times uh, the, the journey difficulties. Uh, and I want to pay tribute to them because it is they who, who, who drive the gritters and uh, man the salt barns. Uh, uh, and, and seek to give uh, assistance um, in, in, in very poor uh, conditions, particularly um, in the wee small hours of the morning. Uh, the, minister, or, sorry, the member, uh, the former minister, <laughs> but uh, the, uh, the member has asked uh, about timescale. We, we, we are seeking to work through uh, the issues that were presented to us as a result in the final stages of uh, the. Um, uh, the, the public inquiry, and indeed um, uh, we uh, will seek to, to, to uh, give our view on all of those when, when the appropriate advice has been provided. I hope that will be uh, uh, in a period uh, uh, of, uh, of weeks rather than months, uh, uh, but we will uh, we'll work through those as quickly as we can. Well, Mr Cathal Oshin. Well, with the previous ask and Corridor, and can I also uh, extend my sympathies to the family of the young girl killed on the A6, the uh, latest in many scores of deaths on that road. And uh, like Mr. Campbell and others from Derry, uh, I spent an hour on the Dungiven to Mahara section this morning, met one, um, met one small snowplough, uh, and that's despite the fact that there was a, an orange snow warning uh, yesterday evening. But uh, can I ask the Minister? Uh, in terms of the public inquiry, which finished in October uh, 2012, and we are now sitting in February, almost March, of uh, 2015, that when, in real terms, can we expect uh, the announcement uh, around um, that inquiry and the results thereof? I'm grateful to the, uh, to the member uh, for his uh, uh, supplementary question, and obviously um, he too. Um, experienced uh, some delays this morning. Let me absolutely say that um, Transport NI and the other agencies were all out on the ground seeking to alleviate conditions. Conditions, as the member well knows, can change uh, in a matter of moments or minutes, in a very short period indeed. Uh, and, and certainly uh, uh, I want to uh, thank uh, all of uh, my staff um, who uh, dedicate themselves to, to try and um, ease uh, the, the journeys uh, for everyone uh, all over Northern Ireland. Let me say that um, <clears throat> I, I do get a sense of the, the, the frustration in, uh, in the member's question about, um, but uh, all of these issues have to be properly explored. Um, and uh, they were presented at, at a very late state, uh, stage in the public inquiry. 
but it is therefore important that, that they be properly assessed uh, because <clears throat> I think experience, uh, even in other schemes, has shown that uh, where there are attempts to circumvent or shorten uh, procedures, uh, that can bring uh, its own problems and can lead to further delays. So we, we want to try and avoid that, but we will continue to work um, through these issues and report back uh, at uh, the earliest possible time. Donny Canahan. Deputy Speaker. And can I thank the Minister for his answer so far? But we've had media reports in relation to a potential top up compensation scheme for landowners affected by vesting. And with Randallstown and Toome both being in my patch, would the Minister provide an update on these plans and whether we're going to bring Northern Ireland into line with the GB? I'm grateful to the, to the member for his um, supplementary uh, uh, question and indeed for uh, the abiding interest that he has in his constituency uh, in South Antrim. And, uh, and I hope that, I, I'm sure that will prove beneficial uh, as, as, we, as, as, we come, uh, as we move forward into the year. Can I confirm uh, that I brought uh, proposals to the executive to ensure uh, that landowners, whether farmers or business owners or private landowners, are, prop are properly uh, comments, compensated when government steps in uh, to vest uh, their land. Uh, this proposal is in line with the current position in GB, uh, although I am not uh, demanding that any change slavishly uh, follows the detail of, of the, uh, the GB position, but that it makes our approach equally uh, as fair. Um, it, it will not have a significant uplift, uh, uplifting cost against the overall costs of, uh, uh, of any given road project but will, in my view, uh, leave landowners feeling more valued. And for me, this is an issue about fairness, uh, and I'm working hard to secure executive support for my proposal so that we can bring legislation to the floor of this House for debate. Mr. Pat Sheehan. Can I good case to three? Question three, please. Uh, I support fully the uh, Northern Ireland Concessionary Fares Scheme, uh, and since I've taken office, uh, I've ensured that the funding required for the scheme is to the fore of my executive colleagues' minds when budget allocations uh, have been considered. Um, there are currently uh, two uh, bus operators based in Belfast who provide concessionary fares on behalf of the department, uh, namely Metro, TransLink, and the Belfast Bus Company. There is also a small element of concessionary travel provided by Northern Ireland Railways for uh, journeys that begin and end within Belfast. There are other bus operators based outside Belfast who uh, have services to the city that provide concessionary fares. Um, of the approximately 35 million concessionary fare journeys last year, we estimate those within Belfast account for approximately 7 million. Um, in the Belfast area, uh, the cost of concessions in 2013-14 is estimated at just over 11 million out of a total spend of over 40 million. This figure does not take account of journeys into and out of Belfast. Historically, the concessionary fare scheme has been underfunded. My department had to secure additional funds during this financial year to cover the cost of the scheme. I appreciate and welcome uh, the fact that extra resource, $9.5 million, has been allocated for concessionary fares in 2015-16. However, this was based on existing passenger numbers and fares, and if there is a growth in passenger numbers, as current trends would indicate, then there is likely to be pressure on the budget, and as such, it is likely that my department will have to bid for additional budget uh, if the executive wishes this scheme to expand. The entry into the scheme of new operators, whether in Belfast or outside of Belfast, will increase this financial pressure. And given the, that the scheme attracts support from all sections of the community and across all parties, I encourage all members to show their support for the scheme by canvassing their uh, colleagues in the executive to ensure that the appropriate level of funding is allocated to my department to cover all existing and future commitments with, uh, with the concessionary fare scheme in place. Before I call Mr Sheehan, can I remind the Minister of the two-minute rule? Mr Sheehan. I got a free last concord August Buega Slation Ara Sukhdaragra. Thank the, the Minister for his answer. I wonder could the Minister tell us if he has met uh, the Belfast Taxis uh, Community Interest uh, Company with a view to discussing concessionary fares in the taxis that they operate? Mr. Mayor. Grateful to the member for his uh, supplementary uh, question. Um, 
and I, I am certainly aware that over the past number of years, um, uh, representatives from West Belfast Taxi Transport Association uh, have met with officials to discuss the concessionary fare scheme. Uh, the last such, uh, such meeting was um, over a year ago in 20, February 2014. Uh, obviously, uh, there, there had been discussions uh, in, in relation to an appropriate ticketing system that could be used. Uh, and, uh, and other such issues, um, and the audit, I have to uh, say to the member, and the member would probably know, that the audit requirements uh, for uh, the concessionary fare scheme are fairly explicit uh, and uh, would have to be adhered to. Um, since then, there have been no further discussions um, with the organisation, uh, but uh, I understand a recent request has been received, and uh, officials will pursue that. Right back. Thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. <clears throat> the concessionary fares scheme provides a means by which a single pass can enable someone to travel by bus or rail, a form of uh, integrated ticketing. And the Minister has mentioned it, integrated ticketing. Can he give us an update of his plans for integrated ticketing uh, for public sector transport, bus and rail? I'm grateful to the uh, member for his interest and for his question. Um, TransLink is currently finalising um, an economic appraisal uh, to examine the costs and benefits uh, of various replacement options for a new ticketing system. My department will require that any new ticketing system is compatible with the Belfast Rapid Transit uh, project and offers the best possible value for money for passengers and the department. Uh, the new system will be designed so that uh, it can also be used by other public transport operators. Um, when the economic appraisal is finalised, it will need approval um, from my department and also the Department for Finance Personnel. Um, and in relation to the concessionary fares scheme, uh, this, will apply, uh, this uh, will apply to Belfast Rapid Transit uh, as it does to other public transport services in Northern Ireland. Chris Little. Thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. I welcome the work that the Minister has done to maintain concessionary fares. Uh, can I take this opportunity to put on record that despite the best efforts of the, the DUP to suggest otherwise, the Alliance Party has at no time proposed the withdrawal of free yeah, public yeah, travel for never, older people. Never, but can, never. I, can I ask the Minister whether any assessment has been undertaken as to what percentage of free public transport is used by people in employment? The member raises uh, 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 an issue which uh, does uh, garner some debate uh, at, at some particular times, uh, and, and, and there is um, an anomaly within the system that technically does uh, uh, allow um, a, a percentage of, of users of the concessionary scheme to benefit by, by travelling effectively to work. Um, I, I'm not minded uh, to, uh, to, to amend uh, the scheme uh, at present. Uh, I'm satisfied that that uh, uh, only affects a, a reasonably small minority of users. And I think, um, I think uh, any such attempt to, to tamper with the scheme I think would send the wrong impression. Uh, I, I'm a very strong believer in this concessionary fare scheme. Uh, I believe it has created great opportunities for people to get out and about, for people to, to travel, for people to um, use it for, for social reasons, um, as well as uh, for, for retail benefit to local towns uh, and uh, Belfast and other cities. So um, I think uh, the perception might be that to simply tinker at, at it because of one uh, uh, perceived flaw uh, I think would be the wrong message to send out because I believe in concessionary fares and I will defend it and I will support it and I will argue for it at all times. Mr Ross Hussey. Deputy Speaker. feedback on public transport usage in Northern Ireland and to report that passenger numbers uh, are increasing year on year. In the 2011-12 financial year, the number of passenger journeys uh, uh, were over 77 million. And in the current financial year, TransLink are on target to achieve 80.5 million passenger journeys, an increase of over 4.5%. This growth uh, is most uh, significant on the railways but in overall terms compares very well with trends in other parts of the UK and uh, in the Republic of Ireland. 
Uh, this, uh, success might, uh, this success reflects my Department's investment in modernising the bus fleet and the introduction of new trains. In conjunction with TransLink, I have sought to provide or to improve passenger facilities and infrastructure, provided more park and ride opportunities to encourage car users to access public transport for at least part of their journey, and, where possible, introduced road uh, priority measures for buses to speed up services that would otherwise be held up by traffic uh, congestion. Say for a supplementary. Thank you, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, and I thank the Minister for his response so far. Given the, the clear growth in public transport usage overseen by him, will the Minister undertake not to sanction any TransLink proposals to reduce the frequency of local bus services with the, without public consultation on them, and will he take cognizance of the outcome of any consultation? Well, uh, grateful to the member for his uh, supplementary, and indeed he raises a very uh, important uh, question, and in, in the context where we are um, with budgets, etc., I think <coughs> it is important to, to set out uh, the, the, uh, my position. And I take the view that any change uh, in frequency to public transport services is something of such importance that it should be and must be consulted upon pu uh, publicly, and in particular, the views of passengers must be properly taken into account. Uh, and I make clear my expectation that such uh, an exercise is undertaken with any proposals that come forward. And of course, decisions, any decisions taken after consultation will have to take full account and given proper weight to responses received to the consultation process. Because I'm proud uh, of the progress that we've made on public uh, transport over the past few years, and I'm determined that in spite uh, of an incredibly challenging financial position, that the progress we've made is not put in any way in reverse. Mr. George Robinson. Deputy Speaker. Deputy Speaker, could I ask the Minister, would, would the Minister agree that free travel for over six days and the partial upgrade over rail network has contributed to growth numbers on, on public transport? Well, I'm very pleased to, to, to agree with the member, and, uh, and I take that as a compliment to uh, my handling of this department. <laughs> and, and, uh, and, uh, yeah, and I know that uh, the Oscars were last night, but um, uh, we didn't get nominated. But, uh, the, uh, but I think the member does raise uh, an important. I, I think it is one of the one of the few things that people give genuine credit. Uh, to the work of this executive and particularly this department. And as Minister, I'm, I'm, I'm very pleased that uh, public transport continues to expand and into the future I want to see that continue and built upon. And that's why I would say back, uh, I think, to the member that in terms of influence that he would use his considerable influence, particularly with the Finance Minister and his uh, party executive colleagues, to ensure that uh, this department is properly funded, both in terms of concessionary fares and the running of public transport. Mr. Patsy McLaughlin. Uh, for you, John Coyle. Thanks very much, Mr. President, Deputy Speaker. And just leading on from that particular point, um, what analysis will be done by the department or the minister, indeed, in regard to the recent fare increases by, announced by TransLink, as to the effects they'll have? in keeping people in their cars rather than attracting them to use of the public transport system? Well, I'm grateful to the member for his um, supplementary question. And, and although um, clearly uh, fare increases at, at, any, at any stage uh, uh, are always unwelcome, uh, I can assure the member that they have been kept to a minimum. Um, and it remains the case that TransLink fares compare favourably with those in the rest of the United Kingdom and indeed the Republic of Ireland. Since 2011, fare increases in GB have been more than two uh, to three times higher than in Northern Ireland. And uh, fare increases here have been about half the rate uh, of inflation during my term uh, as Minister. So that in, uh, in that time, passengers have actually seen a uh, cut in fares in real terms. Now, this is something that has benefited uh, passengers and helped to ensure passenger numbers have increased to over 80 million last year. I, have been able, uh, to, uh, I had been able to maintain a freeze on fares since mid-2013, but in the light uh, of the current budgetary uh, situation and the, current, uh, and the cuts in the TransLink budget, both this year and next, a fare increase was required. And I, but I very much hope that the current growth can continue. 
Order. That ends the period for listed questions. We now move on to 15 minutes of topical questions. I call Mr Jimmy Spratt. Principal Deputy Speaker, and can I ask the Minister in relation to the uh, London Derry uh, real fiasco in terms of the uh, original cost of some uh, £22 million, which we were told would not increase? What, in, what has he done in relation to uh, an inquiry into how his officials within the department and indeed TransLink have handled this matter? Uh, and will he also confirm that three of the four uh, firms that have tendered uh, for the new process, that three of those uh, tenders have pulled out? I am grateful to the uh, uh, member for his, uh, for his question. And of course, uh, when he was uh, chair of, of the Regional Development Committee, um, uh, he, he, he was much more hands-on in terms of the issue. Um, I have had, and he, will, he may know, uh, had uh, discussions with uh, the, uh, the Regional Development Committee uh, in terms of this issue. Yes, there was a setback in that the um, original estimate uh, was clearly um, uh, incorrect. Uh, that has been addressed, and, and uh, the steps that I took uh, were to uh, instigate what is called a power review. Uh, we, are, uh, we have accepted the recommendations of that power review, and indeed the work of that uh, power committee, which was independent completely of, of, of both TransLink and uh, the department, um, uh, has sought to, um, to uh, make changes that, uh, that, uh, for even contracts into the future. Uh, so, in terms of that lessons learned, um, we were very clear, uh, and I'm content that progress is being made on it. Uh, there are also the lessons learned w within both the department and TransLink, uh, and uh, I'm currently um, uh, considering um, uh, the, the, the outcome um, of those uh, um, r r reports. As I, I think outlined in an earlier question during um, question time uh, to, to Mr. Elliott, uh, progress, we continue to make progress on the contract and the project, uh, and I very much hope that that, uh, that that will continue so that we can successfully uh, bring this project to uh, um, a conclusion that everyone will be satisfied with. Mr. Sprout for a supplementary. Thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. And can I, I say to the Minister, and he describes the uh, issue as a setback, a setback of £20 million to the public purse. Uh, will the Minister ensure, given the cosy relationship between TransLink and the officials in his department, which is, I think, quite well established now, will he ensure that heads roll as a result of that? Uh, and if he's not prepared uh, to sack folks within his department or TransLink, will he consider his position? Okay. Grateful to the. Um, I, I, I'm sorry that it's, uh, it's not possible to nominate anyone now for an Oscar uh, uh, so, so soon after the event uh, 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 overnight. Uh, and um, I have to say to, to, to the member, the, the, the member well knows um, that. Um, I had, uh, have expressed my displeasure uh, to TransLink at, at, uh, at uh, the sequence of events which led to this. But we are in a position where we are moving forward on this scheme, not least uh, through uh, the actions that I have taken. And I, I have made clear that there would be no hiding place for anyone in terms of uh, lessons uh, learned. But what I am particularly interested in is to moving forward to see the project successfully completed. That's the task that I've set myself, and I believe that's what people in um, the area uh, and in the region of the Northwest, that's what they want to see, and uh, we can do the redden up at a later stage. The name at question number two has been withdrawn within the permitted framework time frame. I call Mr. Leslie Cree. Thank you, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, and I'm grateful if the Minister could provide an update on the Craig Anted Roads project. Thank you uh, to, the, to the member and, uh, uh, for his uh, question and um, for his interest, obviously, in, in this particular scheme. Um, as the member will be aware, my department is proposing to implement a scheme to improve the roads infrastructure at Craig Antlet. 
Three options were put forward for public consultation uh, early last year, uh, which has generated much discussion on which options should be taken forward. Um, having considered all of the relevant information available, it was decided that a single roundabout with a new link road is uh, the preferred option. However, uh, this scheme could have an impact on the local environment, and I can therefore confirm that my officials are continuing to discuss this scheme with colleagues from the Department of Environment, Planning and I, and in particular the potential impact on the local environment. Uh, once this process has been concluded, an announcement will be made on the most appropriate way forward. Mr. Cree for supplementary. I thank the Minister for that. Uh, Minister, I wonder could you give us a likely time scale, bearing in mind the project has been going for some time, and also any particular uh, safety factors that, that may need to be undertaken? Grateful to the member uh, for. Uh, I, I'm not in a position to, to, to specify a timeline because of the, uh, the considerations and working with other departments. The member will, of course, know that uh, th there is current uh, work being undertaken um, uh, at uh, or close to the, uh, close to the uh, site or the, the, the area involved at Craig Antlet. Um, my department is currently implementing a collision remedial scheme for the existing road, lay uh, road layout. This will um, comprise of high friction surfacing and additional signs. Um, the new surfacing has already been laid and the signs should be erected within the next four weeks, but it is not uh, being undertaken um, in any way um, to delay or detract from uh, the, the main scheme. The name at number four has uh, been withdrawn within the permitted time frame. Uh, Mr. Alistair Ross is not in his seat. I call Mr. Stephen Agnew. Thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. The Minister has received many questions from me on the possibility of festive land at Moboy Road, um, which has been contaminated by a, a, a legal landfill. And, and one answer he referred to a cost effective engineering solution to, to dealing with the contaminated waste. Can he say what the cost of that cost effective solution would be and how effective does he believe it will be? Well, I, I'm grateful to, uh, to the member for, uh, for his interest, which extends clearly beyond North Down uh, and goes to uh, Dungiven and other parts. Um, the, uh, um, I, I can update him as follows. I uh, have not yet uh, confirmed uh, any of the, the, the statutory orders for the London Dairy to Dungiven Dual Carriageway. Uh, if in due course I, I confirm the direction or order to complete planning for the scheme, the best in order will continue to remain in draft until funding has been uh, confirmed. This uh, draft vesting order, as presented at the public inquiry into the scheme, has not been amended at uh, Moboy. Um, it has not been necessary for my department to undertake any additional assessment uh, work at Moboy as the environmental considerations into the chosen road alignment took uh, existing conditions known at the time into account. The environment, uh, environmental statement is still appropriate uh, and relevant and clearly deals with any discovery of potentially contaminated land and outlines appropriate uh, actions which should be taken. The land being vested at this location which forms part of the illegal landfill site is re still required for flood compensation measures. Um, additional environmental assessments have been undertaken by the Northern Ireland Environment Agency and this information has been used to inform potential solutions to the contamination which may be required should remediation still be, ne be necessary. Now, should the contamination issue remain unresolved when the road is being built, I am content that cost-effective measures can be deployed to remedy the undesirable effects of the buried waste. Well, Mr. Agnew for supplementary. I thank the Minister for his answer and I can assure him when my interest takes me outside of North Down I do try to use public transport where possible, as, a, as I'm sure he, he knows. Um, in relation to the uh, possible cost-effective solution, um, will this require him to, to engage with Europe to ensure that any such solution um, will, will not result in European infractions? Well, uh, grateful to the member for um, his supplementary question, and I never doubted that, that he wouldn't use uh, a public transport in his other journeys and, and, and uh, encourage him to do that uh, increasingly. Uh, could I um, 
say that obviously if, if further measures have to be considered then we would take uh, the advice clearly of other departments or, or, or agencies. Um, whether or not that would in, uh, be necessary to include Europe at that stage, but we would certainly be mindful, I think, of, of, of any potential f uh, proceedings that could be taken, that we would be open to or liable for. Uh, so I think it would be sensible to, uh, to, to, uh, to collaborate uh, with other agencies and departments as necessary. Well, Mr William Humphrey. Principal Deputy Speaker, I thank the Minister for his answer so far. The Minister, a number of uh, months ago, came out on a visit to Twitter Avenue with myself, and there was to be a, a consultation on both parking uh, for the residents living there and pedestrian access across each side of the road. Can I ask the Minister for an update on that, please? Well, I'm grateful to the, to, to the member because I, I, mean, I, I well remember the, the visit. Um, my officials uh, sent a preliminary design drawing. Uh, detailing a, a proposed alternative traffic calming scheme along Todale Avenue uh, to yourself, I think, um, in October 2014. Um, and uh, the member shakes his head uh, uh, to indicate that he hasn't received that. Um, uh, An accompanying letter also detailed the advantages and disadvantages of the proposals um, and asked um, that you would undertake to discuss this with the local residents association and any other interested uh, parties in, in, in the locality and provide uh, a, a response. Um, to date, uh, my officials have no record of receiving a response, either from you or further representations, and so um, I, I will be interested in your, in your follow-up supplementary. Appreciate that. For obviously, supplement. there's been no follow-up from me because I didn't get the letter or the drawings, and I, I, I don't know what happened there. But perhaps if the, the officials could forward those on, I'd be happy to do that because very clearly those people who live there uh, and those people who, who are pedestrians living there need to have this issue addressed because the minister has seen it firsthand. There is very clearly a problem, and we would be keen to have that, program, uh, uh, that problem addressed and alleviated as soon as is possible. So I'd welcome that, and I will, you know, the minister's in, interest in it. The member for his uh, supplementary uh, question, and, and I will endeavour to ensure that he is in early receipt uh, of, of, of the necessary details, uh, and hopefully progress can be made. Question number eight, Mr. Dominic Bradley is not in his place. Question number nine, Mr. Sammy Wilson is not in his place. I call Mr. Stephen Mutry. Deputy Speaker, uh, can the minister give me an update on the house, please, in relation to the proposed extension to Millennium Way, Lurgan? Grateful to the, uh, to, to the member for his uh, supplementary question, and uh, I, I, I'm so sorry that other members are not in their place to, uh, to, to, to be able to respond to them. Um, but uh, <laughs> uh, the, the member uh, will, will know that uh, this is a scheme that um, has been uh, on the go for a very long time. Uh, the um, planning permission for the scheme was granted. Um, on the 24th of March 2014, um, the notice of intention to make a vesting order uh, for the scheme was published during weeks uh, ending the 7th and 14th of November, with the closure date, the receipt of objections being the 16th of December 2014. Um, two um, objections were received, and Transport NI officials met with both objectors in January to discuss the content of the objections, follow-up letters. Summarising the content of the meetings, uh, the content of the meetings were sent to each objector. Each letter included a request for them to confirm if they intended to withdraw their objections. Mr. Murtry, for supplementary. Thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker, and I thank the Minister for the update. This indeed has been a long and protracted issue. This is a relatively small scheme, Minister. Can I ask you, will you go down in history, Minister, as the Minister who delivered nothing for Lurgan? Or will you go down as the minister who delivered Lurgan's own Kennedy Way? The choice is yours, Minister. I'd like an answer. Thank you very much indeed. I'm uh, not sure about Kennedy Way. Um, that may have already been done somewhere else. But um, let me say, I, I, uh, I, I, I view it uh, as a debt of honour to uh, people like uh, the late Harold McCusker, to Sam Gardner, MLA party colleague, to Joanne Dobson, MLA, and to other local representatives who have uh, consistently 
lobbied for this important scheme. I recently uh, had the opportunity to travel in, in the Lurgan area uh, and uh, I, I need no persuasion as to the benefits that this scheme would bring to Lurgan. Uh, and, uh, uh, I think he will find that uh, when things are being delivered to Lurgan, it will be the Ulster Unionist Party that will best deliver them. 